What is going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about uh, something that we've discovered mixing uh, the reptile hobby with the uh, bird hobby. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of funny because usually when you mix them, uh, the reptiles eating the birds don't get shitty at me. It happens. I have reptiles. They have to be fed. Um, and it's either mice or poultry. So, yeah. We'll get that out of the way and we'll continue on with the video. So today we're going to be talking about heating. Uh, heating, in particularly heating baby chicks. Uh, we're raising baby quails. At the moment, well, not at the moment because they're all outside now and we've got a couple more in the incubator. But there is these things, uh, heat, I'm not sure what they're called, heat, heat planks, heat shelves, heat, uh, not sure what they're called. Probably should have looked that up before. When we were looking up how to heat our chicks and stuff, it was light bulbs, uh, you know, lights that create quite a lot of heat. Um, right now we're smack bang in the middle of summer so it is very hot already and lights tend to create the ambient temperature uh, uh, much greater and um, it increases the heat in the whole entire enclosure and you'll be like so but you're new to birds you don't know anything about heating well fortunately it's heating's heating and when you heat an enclosure with a snake in it or, or with another, actually that's not a light bulb, we're going to get to this one, or with a lizard in it, it's the same as bloody chicken. So, we are talking about a hybrid of reptile knowledge and animal knowledge in general, and um, we're talking about the difference between heat light and heat tiles, but it would be like raised heat tiles for the chickens. With the snakes, the heat lights, you need a heat cage. With the chickens, you don't quite need one um, that thin, but obviously if you use some of the things that they use for chickens, the snakes get into it and then get stuck on the bulb and get burnt. So that is a heat light. It creates heat and then that heats up this area here, but it also heats up the ambient temperature. So everything around here gets hot and um, it's great, it's cheap, it's easy, but if you come over here, the heat tile looks a little bit, I don't want to get bit, this is not a snake bite video, this is, you can go over there video, so you don't get me, oops, sorry, you go that way, that way, you stay over there, nope, nope, you stay there. Alright, so we're talking about ugh, heat tiles, and that is a heat cord under a heat tile, and you see how it zigzags, so it gives you kind of a, uh, alright, wait, give me a sec, we'll put this lovely lady back over here, so she can have some heat. Ugh. Basically, I don't know where I left the video off, so we're just cutting from whatever I was saying to now. Um, basically, it's a heat tile, but raised for bird purposes. This one's not been cleaned yet. This is basically what you buy. So you can buy these uh, heat plates, heat tiles. They're quite expensive. They're in Australia, when we looked at ordering one, they were about uh, 150 something dollars. The lighting in here is horrible for videoing. So basically, if you remember what the heat tile looked like, there's just heat cord running like this through here. It's a 25 watt. It's a 30 watt, my bad. 30 watt, 240 volt. Um, but you can get all different types of uh, heat cord, do, do, do. let me see if I can get that to, there you go, 30 watt. Um, you can get all different
different types of heat cord, uh, different thicknesses. This was just the smallest one we had that was free, that I didn't have to pull anything apart from. And then uh, we just sandwiched it between some core flute. The core flute isn't super good for this, but it works really well because we're still testing this out. Um, and I didn't want to spend money on something that's not going to work, but I was almost 100% certain this is going to work because it's the same product. And um, yeah, I just put some thread, stainless rod, because um, you don't want it all rusting. So just go get stainless because it won't rust. And then, um, or you can get zinc plated, or you can figure out your own way. And basically, it's just drilled holes. We loosen this one and tighten this one, and that adjusts the height. So, um, super simple, super easy. These are way too long. They could have been all the way down here, and we would have been fine. I would recommend if you're going to use something flimsy like this, this is, like I said, the first, uh, first of many of these we'll probably end up making. I would brace the tops with something like a piece of wood that goes between all the legs but this holds itself up it is very flimsy but that doesn't really matter um, and then you can adjust the height for whatever the birds need one thing that doesn't change with animals is that with their heating and their environment you can tell a lot of uh, what they need by watching them so it is very important that if you make your own things that you pay attention to your animals and how they are acting because if they're all miles away from it it could be way too hot if they're all really huddled under it it might be way too cold if uh, it might not even be on <laughs> that's a thing you forget to plug things on or if you have timers you set them wrong or thermostats and you set them wrong they can turn off. I've done it with animals, uh, done it with reptiles. Thankfully, reptiles are a little bit more forgiving when it comes to no heat than, um, than baby chicks. So maybe don't do that. I mean, right here in Australia, we're in the middle of summer. So if the heat cut out, they would last quite a while without heat. Um, even at night time, I don't think they'd struggle um, all too much. I think you'd be more worried about overheating them or if we have them inside the aircon being too cold. So yeah, it is very important to pay attention to your animal and how they're acting. If you've got all your chicks huddling over each other, they can suffocate each other, they can crush each other, and that is definitely not something that you want. So if you're noticing them, um, maybe lower the height of the heat tile, or you've put the heat, uh, you've, you've used the wrong sort of heat tile, but I don't think you can use the wrong sort of heat cord because the heat cords will produce quite a bit of heat no matter how many watts they are. Even a 5 watt heat pad, which is what I had on the frogs actually, they're not on the frogs anymore, um, that gets quite hot, like it works really well. So I'm not going to say do your research, I, this is not your research, you do your own research because uh, I'm not sure what products you're going to be using. If you're using heat mat, that's slightly different than heat cord. It's the same thing, but different. Um, and then if you're using heat uh, tape, which is more of an American thing, um, that is also different. But exactly the same thing. You can use the exact same. With heat tape, you wouldn't even need to sandwich it, but sandwiching it probably be a little bit better because then you're heating up something that then is heating up the chicks so if there is a spike in temperature on your heat tape or your heat mat or your heat cord um, it'll be a little bit more dampened because you're heating up something instead of yeah and then by then it'll figure out that it's too hot your thermostat will turn it off um, so yeah I recommend you run a thermostat do as I say not as I do I do not use a heat uh, thermostat on this because this sits at the same temperature all day every day and um, the only reason why I need to adjust the well the only way I need to adjust the temperature is by raising the height for the cheeks or raising getting it lower so they can squish in there and and uh, get nice and warm but yeah this is the alternative to spending $150 $160 on a silly little piece of plastic that does the exact same thing as this um, 
I love those products because they're easy and they're aimed at people that have the money um, to do it. But I'm not going to sit here and say that that's the only way that you can do it. If you have the money to go do it, sure. This is, it probably costs you 50 bucks to make this um, and uh, 10 seconds of using scissors and that you could make this They're super easy to make. Um, or you can put a little bit more effort into it and make this but a little bit better. Um, or you can go to work for a couple of hours and uh, spend your hard-earned money on a something that's exactly the same as this. They do look a little bit prettier because they're made in the thousands, so you can uh, get a nice looking base or something. If you have a 3D printer, you can go nuts. You can make all kinds of things just using this method of heating with a heat cord. Um, and, and you can make some, people make all kinds of cool things. That is it. The, if you guys, I mean, you, I don't think you need to be shown how to make these, make these. But if you guys do, I'm sure I can help you out with one of them in the future. If that is something that you want to see. But you get the idea. You've seen the one in the snake enclosure. You know how it looks. Get some heat tape. Get some stuff. Slap it together. I'm sure you'll be good at it. And uh, yeah, we'll wrap the video up here. If you've got any questions, comment them below or hit up my Facebook page, Life of Sai. And um, yeah, I will see you guys later. Take it easy, stay awesome, and remember, you can't fail if you try. See you later.